Hello, Linda here. Today, I'm here to tell you about some props you can use to help you with your yoga poses. And props are designed just to give you extra comfort and stability. It's not a sign of weakness at all to use them. And sometimes you can modify poses to make them more doable for you by adding some props. So I'm gonna show you some of the classic yoga props and give you suggestions for things you can use from around your house instead of going out. You don't need to go out and spend a lot of money. So I'll come over to the mat and give you some suggestions. Be right there. First, I'd like to talk about a yoga mat. This is one thing that I think is pretty important just for your own safety to make sure that your feet don't slip. And yoga mats usually have kind of a sticky surface so that your feet can really grip onto them. So if you were thinking about getting any one thing, I think a yoga mat would be a really great thing to get. And you can spend quite a bit of money on them. But this one that I have here, I've been using this type since I started teaching and they have held up pretty well. It's got kind of a waffly exterior, which I like. Some people would rather have a smooth one. But one thing I do recommend, if you look at the thickness, I usually buy a five to six me me millimeter, not meter, but millimeter of thickness. And this is usually really comfortable underneath your feet or your knees if you're kneeling on the ground or if you're lying on the mat. They also come in about two to four millimeter thickness. And I don't find those as comfortable, but all of this is up to you. So this one happens to be made by Guyam and it's about a third of the price of some of the really expensive ones, but I found that it works out pretty well. If you happen to be practicing outdoors with your mat on the grass or out on a deck or concrete, it might take a bit more uh, abuse by being on that rough surface. So you just have to guide yourself as to whether to use a really cheap one outside or invest in a really good one and just keep it for that purpose. So that takes care of mats. And now I'm gonna stand up and show you my chair. So I like to use a folding chair for yoga class because it's very easy to move it around as we go through the class. And a dining room chair would also work really well as long as it has a flat seat. So check that out. Make sure the height is good for you and just decide what you will use. You don't need to go out and get any special chair, but make sure of the flat seat and the good height. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way and come down to sit on the mat and I'll show you some other things. See you in a second. Here we are down on the mat. And just one other thing I'd like to say, if you are starting out and you don't have a mat, Try to make sure that you're standing on a surface where your feet won't slip. It could be some kind of hard floor surface. And if you're using a floor surface, you'll be able to balance better on that. But you might also find that standing on a rug or a carpet will help your feet not to slip. Just be aware that when you're doing something balancing, uh, you might not be as solid. And take care to keep yourself safe if you're doing that. Now, a few other things. Blocks are something that we use a lot in yoga classes. And if you wanted to invest in anything else, I would say getting your own actual yoga blocks would be something that would really enhance your practice. Uh, they're not too expensive and they come in sets of two. So this one I have here, is about, weighs about three or four pounds and it has a covering of cork. And this is my favorite type. Um, it's really solid. It's about nine inches by six inches by four inches. And it has three different surfaces that you can use to lean on. 
And you can also get wood ones that are about the exact same size, shape, solidity, and price. But I find the surface of them is a little bit more slippery. So I like the cork, it's easier to grip onto. And you can also get foam blocks. And these are about half the price of the cork or wood blocks. And these, if you have to take them anywhere, they're really light, easy to take, and they will work well. But if you're using them to stand on, they sometimes kind of squish down and they come back up again. It doesn't ruin the block, but it doesn't seem like such a solid surface to stand on as the cork blocks. Other alternatives, if you don't have blocks, if you're doing something where you're standing, then a nice solid book is a great thing to stand on. Just put it down and stand on top of it. But if you're doing something like a lunge pose where you're kneeling and you're leaning onto the blocks, let me just show you. You might be leaning down something like this. And so with the blocks, you're really sturdy. If you're trying to do this with a book, it might be kind of collapsing on you. You could try a nice sturdy box about the size of a shoe box, or you might even use a small stool or a can of tomato juice or something like that. That could work as well. So those are some options for blocks. Another item that we use often is a yoga strap. And this is made out of webbing, so it's not stretchy and it has a buckle on the end of it. The buckle is not absolutely necessary. You can always just tie whatever you're using. If you don't have a yoga strap, you could use a long scarf, or the belt from your bathrobe or a tie, any long thing could easily be substituted for a strap. Something else that we sometimes use in place of a strap is a resistance band, nice and stretchy. These are really inexpensive to buy and you can find them at all kinds of sporting goods shops, or of course on the internet. Um, if you don't have an actual resistance band, there's a lot of things you could use. You could take a pair of tights or pantyhose or an old sweatshirt with some long arms on it, or even just a piece of fabric that has some stretch into it. So lots of, lots of things that you could use instead. Sometimes we need a blanket for some cushioning. And for using at home, I like to use a towel. A towel seems to have a better grip. If you've got your body, let's say you have your knees on a towel and you're stretching your body out long. This won't slide as much as a, a soft fluffy blanket will. You can get nice yoga blankets that work just as well. But for home use, and because we all have towels and towels are easy to wash, I just use some large towels in my yoga practice at home. And sometimes we need a pillow. And this can just be any kind of cushion you have around your house, whatever works for you. It's not a specific yoga thing. Sometimes we use weights. So I've just got a hand weight here, it's three pounds. But if people don't have this, you can take something out of your pantry, like a large canned good. Sometimes we we'll use something like soup cans or cans of tomatoes, or you might pick up something heavier, like a, a bag of rice or something like that. So sometimes we'll use maybe a jug of vinegar. So all kinds of things that you have around your house. And sometimes we'll use balls. Now this is a massage ball that you can heat up in the microwave. That's a little bit more expensive. It's nice to have if you've got some aches and pains 
but this is a dog chew toy that I bought at the dollar store. And this is works really well. I use it a lot. And of course, it was really inexpensive. But if you have anything around your house, like an old uh, road hockey ball, a tennis ball, or one of your pet's toys that you can uh, grab while you're doing your practice, any of those things will work. And the last thing, sometimes we use a sock. So you can just grab a sock, you know, maybe a sock that great aunt Mildred gave you that you're not really using for anything and keep that with your yoga stash of props. So that's it about props. I hope that helps you determine what you can use from around your house or what things you might be interested in adding to your collection at some point. Have a great day. Take care. Bye now.